Howdy y'all and welcome back to another video. Now, before you click off this video because you're already bored, let me make something very, very clear. You need to know this information if you fly a drone or if you plan on flying a drone. So, if you're planning on clicking off of this video in about 20 to 30 seconds, go ahead and do it now. Go down to the description and start clicking on the links that I provided that will give you this information. But don't ignore it. Now, if you are one of the people that is willing to watch me, this applies, like I said, to everybody. This doesn't really matter, you know, if you're a hobbyist or not. I mean, it's, it's gonna apply to everybody. But my plan here uh, is to go through the FAA's actual website, go highlight a few things that I think are really important, um, things that may be worth considering if you're going to be getting into the drone world, or if you maybe been doing it and you've been thinking about upgrading and you might want to wait, I don't know. But either way, this is all very important. So not going to keep wasting time. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right. So as you can see here, I am on the FAA's website already under the uh, UAS part of it. So this first little disclaimer up here on December 28, 2020, the FAA announced final rules for unmanned aircraft systems or drones that will require remote identification of drones and allow operators of small drones to fly over people and at night under certain conditions. These rules published on the Federal Register on January 16th, 2021. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna open this little link in a new tab, this remote ID information. If you click on this remote ID rule, that will actually take you to the entire Federal Register. Actually, let me go ahead and just show you. So this will open up the entire Federal Register, the Daily Journal of the United States government. And I mean, I can't even tell you how many, <laughs> how many pages this thing is, but you can see that up here is published on the 15th of 2021 and all these different dates, this subpart C which we'll get to in a little bit. But anyway, so if you wanna knock yourself out and go read all of this, be my guest. I'm not doing that. I just wanna know how to not break the law. But anyways, let's go back. In the off chance that you do not know what remote ID is at this point, let's read it. Remote ID is the ability of a drone in flight to provide identification and location information that can be received by other parties. Now this has been a cause for concern for a lot of people because when it says identification and location information, it's sort of like, well, how much, right? How much privacy is being disclosed at this point? And it can be received by other parties. Does that mean anybody and their mom can just find out your information while you're flying a drone? Not exactly, but once again, we'll get into that a little bit later. Then down here, they're talking about, okay, well, yeah, things are being done in an unsafe manner, yada, yada. Final rule on remote ID. Let's look at this. Now, there's a lot of information here, but one of the big things, you know, there was this NPRM and they had this comment period and they did all these revisions. But if you look at this line right here, all the way down to right there, the final rule was published in the Federal Register on January 15, 2021, with an original effective date of March 16, 2021. So that goes back to that first little bit that I read. But corrections made to the rule and published in the Federal Register on March 10th delayed the effective date to April 21st, 2021. Now, we can go into this a little bit more a little bit later because I'm sure you're already getting bored, but at the end of the day, April 21st is when this whole process officially starts. There is a, there, there's a process period, right? This isn't all just happening on April 21st, so don't freak out yet, but we'll get more into that in a second. Now here's where things get a little bit more um, unpleasant. A lot of you are probably gonna head to the comment section or just click off the video if you haven't already. But there's gonna be three ways for drone pilots to be able to meet the identification requirements of the remote ID rule. It's a little misleading because there's actually only two. So let me scroll down a little further and show you exactly why I say that. So it says three drones, or three ways drone pilots can meet remote ID rule. So you're gonna have remote ID that's a standard remote ID. You're gonna have remote ID that's based on a module, a broadcast module. 
And then you're gonna have FAA Recognized Identification Area, or FRIA, or FRIAs. And this is gonna be where you can fly your drone if you don't have remote ID. Now, if you look at these a little bit closer, the big differences are the standard remote ID means that the drone was built with it in the drone. There was something built into the drone that already has the uh, ability to broadcast all of the remote ID information that's needed. If you come over to the remote ID broadcast module, this is something that is attached to the drone after market, right? So this is gonna to apply to all the users out there that either recently bought a drone or just don't care to upgrade it and you end up just retrofitting. That's the word. And you wanna put your broadcast module onto a drone that was built without one in it, without the broadcasting capability in the drone. So it's not gonna be able to give as much information based on their assumptions here, which means that you're gonna have to fly with limited to a visual line of sight, just like it is right now. Now, last thing here is the FRIAs. Now, this is where a lot of you guys are probably already in the comments upset, but basically drones with mount, remount, <laughs> remount, remount, drones without remote ID can operate without broadcasting, but you must operate within visual line of sight and within the FRIA, which I'm assuming, you know, even here it says, Anyone can fly here, but FRIAs can only be requested by community-based organizations and educational institutions. So it's not quite like AMA, I don't think. I'm not familiar with AMA, but it sounds like this is supposed to be used for fun, like AMA, or educational institutions, anywhere where they're teaching you how to fly a drone. You don't have to be broadcasting, but this means that you're gonna be confined, confound, confound to that little bubble, that little piece of airspace that they've said that you can fly in. So, you know, you basically either comply with remote ID or you don't, you can only fly in these little Frias. I know it's unfortunate, I know it's frustrating, but I do care about people having the right information and being able to make educated decisions. So if you're thinking about getting into drones or if you're thinking about upgrading and you know, I don't know, just something to think about. So, two other big things that I think are worth mentioning at this point. Uh, like I said, there's a bunch of stuff on here. I'm gonna kind of skip past it, but you might be thinking, what if I just fly for fun? Doesn't matter. Which drone pilots must comply with the rule? Well, all drone pilots required to register their UAS, required to register must operate the aircraft in accordance with the rule on remote ID beginning September 16th, 2023, which gives drone owners sufficient time to upgrade their craft, but still a time crunch. It gives you a date now. Now you have something in your mind. And if you're required to register your drone, that means if your drone is over 0 0.55, 0 0.55 pounds, or 250 grams. And as far as I know, I'm sure there's other ones out there, but you know, DJI's Mavic Mini is at 249 grams, which was intentionally done so that you didn't have to register it. So if your drone is under that weight limit, you will not have to comply with remote ID based on what it's saying right here, right? So just, just something else to think about, right? So, last thing here, what information will be broadcast? Well, going through all this, but the big thing is the unique identifier for the drone, the drone's latitude, longitude, geometric altitude and velocity, uh, an indication of the latitude, longitude and geometric altitude of control station or takeoff location broadcast module versus the standard. So that would be one other difference if you do a retrofit module or if you buy it with the standard in the drone. There will be a tie mark and then the emergency status for, is for the standard remote ID drone only. So when it says unique identifier for the drone, so that's where people get a little, little concerned, which I understand. But this last little bit down here, Almost all of the final rule on remote ID becomes effective April 21st, 2021.
the subpart covering the process for FRIA applications, right? So if you're the community-based organizations or this educational institution, that goes into effect on September 16, 2022. So you can't apply for FRIA, right? If you're, if you're a community-based organization or an educational institute, you can't apply until September 16, 2022. So this is all still quite a ways away. And then, you know, because drone manufacturers, as you see here, it says, have until that date, September 16th, 2022, before they must comply with the final rules requirements in them, which means by September 16th, no drone company that's being sold in the US, uh, I suppose, can be selling a drone that does not come standard with remote ID. So this whole module retrofit thing is just kind of a grace period thing for anybody that wants to still comply with it but isn't ready to upgrade their drone yet. So, you know, that's the way that's going. Everybody's gonna be standard, but right now, since there's this transition period. Anyways, and then sep September 16th, 2023, a whole year after that, all drone pilots must meet the operating requirements of Part 89, which Part 89 is the part of Title 14 of the Code of Conduct or whatever that holds all the aerospace stuff. You know, that's part of 107 is under uh, title 14 and all that. Anyways, that's that's all that means. It's just part of the same big title anyways. For most operators, this will mean flying a standard mode ID equipped with a broadcast module or flying out of Freya. So we have time, but those are the dates. April 21st, it goes into effect. And then September 16th, 2022 is kind of when uh, things start to change more. And then September 16th, 2023 is it. So mark it on your calendars, right? After that date, it's all she wrote. But anyways, real quick, let's, let's go cover a little bit more here. As you can see, this is almost copy and paste on this other page here. Same little diagram going on. These changes to the NPRM and the same effective dates, right? But it says kind of again here in a little bit more uh, definition, it says all drone pilots required to register, including those who fly for fun, for business, or for public safety. So it doesn't matter, right? If you have to register your drone, right, you must comply because you must operate their drone in accordance with the final rule on remote ID beginning on September 16th, 2023. Boom, there it is, black and white. I could end the video right there. That's all you need to know. But, which gives drone owners sufficient time to upgrade their aircraft. Note that drones weighing less than 0.55 pounds are not impacted by the final rule. So if you're one of those people that's like, I'm not, nope, absolutely not, not doing this. Get yourself a Mavic Mini or something that weighs under 0.55 pounds. And then you don't have to comply by remote ID. Another little option there. Moving on, what information will be broadcast? So I wanna draw your attention because you know this bottom part is for the module, this top part is for standard. But if you look at this first bullet point here, a unique identifier for the drone. Operators of a standard remote ID drone may choose whether to use the drone serial number or session ID, an alternative form of identification. Now, if I scroll down here at the bottom, as mentioned above, right here under session ID, operators of standard remote ID drones are free to choose between broadcasting their drone serial number or session ID. Note, some standard remote ID drones may not offer the session ID option. The session, ses <laughs> the session ID will be uniquely identifiable such that law enforcement and the FAA can correlate each session ID to, be, to a specific drone's serial number, but this ability will not be publicly available. That is very exciting because the way that I'm reading that is a big concern was that, yeah, can, can you know, Joe Smith point his phone or whatever device at your uh, drone and then find out your address, your full name, your serial number, you know, all that kind of stuff. And even though there's nothing that's particularly, um, you know, sensitive information, you know, it's still just sort of a violation on your privacy if you're just legally operating a drone. So it's nice to know that if you are operating under the standard remote ID drone, that you can use the session ID as long as your drone has it, and that that will be a way to only allow law enforcement and the FAA to see what your drone is and not just anybody. So there's all that. So that's everything with remote ID. 
Um, there are two other things that I kind of wanted to point out that aren't specifically about remote ID, but uh, something that's still going to be um, good to know for the future. So if we actually open up this link right here, this brings us to our recreational flyers. So maybe you're still flying, you know, a normal drone, but then you uh, are still a hobbyist, right? You're complying with remote ID, but you're not doing it for hire. The recreational UAS safety test or trust is coming soon. As far as I know, it's gonna be something that's done online and it's not gonna be as extensive as a part 107, but at this point, it feels like you might as well just go ahead and get your part 107 and actually know airspace and be able to fly within five miles of an airport as long as the airspace is clear and all these different things that you might be still limited to if you're a recreational guy or gal. But, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. All right, I know I've been going on and on here. So let's go into the last bit, which is basically this really cool thing, this remote pilot knowledge test for part 107 holders. Very excited about this. So let's read through this. The final rule updates the initial remote pilot knowledge test to include an operation at night knowledge area. Cool. So your first test, if you are not a part 107 holder and you go in to take your initial test, it will now include information on night knowledge area. Okay. Additionally, the final rule replaces the requirement to complete an in-person recurrent test every 24 calendar months. The update requirement is for remote pilots to complete online recurrent trading, which will include an operation at night knowledge area. The online recurrent training will be offered free of charge to remote pilots beginning April 6th, 2021. Very exciting. We'll no longer have to pay, sounds like, to go in uh, to take a recurrent test every 24 months. So it sounds like from now on, you'll have to take an initial test, but everything after that will be a recurrent thing. But here's another thing for any part 107 listeners that might still be listening. April 6th, 2021. That's when all that will go into effect. I'd recommend doing some research on that when that date comes. So you're not wasting your money on recurrent tests. Although I'm pretty sure that we're not going to let you take it anymore anyways. So, that is all I have for this video. I know it was long, it's boring. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Let me know down in the comments if you made it to the end. I'd really like to know <laughs> because I get it, this stuff's boring. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any questions, please reach out. I'm definitely not a subject matter expert, but I do read about this stuff a lot and I do care about it and I take it seriously. And so I will try to give you the best answers that I can or point you in the right direction. So. Seriously done this time. Thank you so much for watching. Share it, like it, subscribe, and until the next one, see ya.